Nick here, very busy custom. Today we're having a look at a laser from OpLaser. Uh, we picked up this full kit to suit our WorkBee CNC machine. Uh, there are other kits that they've got to fit the Shapoko, X-Carve, and I think there's also a few other ones, but obviously this is pretty much a standalone unit, so as long as you can wire into a PWM for your control board, you can pretty much run this on anything. They do smaller units also for 3D printers. So this is our 6 watt laser. Uh, they've got some other other ones available as well, but this is obviously just their kit and it comes with a 6 watt. So let's have a look inside. First up they give you a nice little QR code so you can bring up the manuals for the different uh, parts of it. So here's the ones here, Xcarve, Stepcraft, Workbee, I2R, CNC, Zmorph, and then just any kit which, you know, anything that's got motion control, you should be able to fit this on. And then just a little pinout diagram. First up, we'll start with this package here, which is going to be our little um, glasses here. Nice set of glasses that are actually the correct colour. Um, you see a lot of the Chinese kits, they come out with green glasses, and they're not actually rated for the wavelength that they're they're running on. So that's something it's just to be aware of if you're buying another kit. Right inside, you've got a cable here, which is obviously going to go from your laser head back to their control board. And this is the laser here. I'll just nip this open. Nice solid unit. Alloy bodied. Nice big chunky fan on it. Now a nice cool feature with this, once we get into this f further, with um, they've actually got a magnetic um, mount for it. This will hit here. So it allows you to actually magnetically connect this to your spindle and remove it so you don't actually have to have it permanently mounted you don't have to remove your spindle which is really cool to see and a few more wiring here then you've got a nice little control board here which is going to be your main turn it on off where everything your power is going into so you've got a testing button nice key on off switch so you can mount this up somewhere close to your kill switch as well keep it all nice and a nice machined case too, not a cheap plastic, it's all machined alloy, very nice quality, and then obviously your keys in here, and then it's a shroud for the, for the laser, which they've also got um, magnetic once again, nice easy on off, they also sell a air powered um, kit which is meant to improve the uh, Increase the power of this up six and a half percent or 6.5 times more powerful, which will be interesting to try later on. And then this is obviously the Wickby mount, which is going to bolt to the side of the spindle. Then your magnetic um, mount bolts to the side of that. Now, it's obviously height reference, so you can set it, set your laser to the correct height, which is going to be 60 mil from your workpiece. Nice easy piece, you know, a lot of companies wouldn't would overlook something like this and you'd have to sort of make something up, but once again this has been nicely machined and engraved as well. Very cool. And then last up this will just be the power supply here. Right. Nothing too fancy, obviously. Like a lot of them, you normally get the plugs and they're normally a Chinese plug on them, it's pretty common. I normally throw these out and just buy a proper one. I mean, you can pick these cables up for a couple of dollars, they're not expensive, but they do include all-in-one adapter, but I just, you know, I never normally use them. I just don't like the look of them, and I don't trust them. So this one here is rated for 2.5 uh, amp output at 19 volt, so it should be more than powerful enough. I've had another laser that... I've been trying to run it at 100% and you get anywhere close to 100% and the power supply just does not keep up so it'll be interesting to see about this, if this one has any issues or not. So let's get this on the machine. So we're going to start off by mounting the docking station, the magnetic docking station which it appears it's only got one way it's going to go, it's going to go that way because otherwise if it goes down that way it's going to be overhanging so it must go this way. Um, four screws are included, obviously two of these are counterboards so Obviously the longer ones go in the, these holes here. And the counterboard ones will go down in here. Oop, and then there's two lots of holes there that mount up. So that'll be viewed from off to the left of the machine, looking at it from the front. 
and hang off there. So when you want to remove it, you simply pull it off. Easy as that. So let's mount, mount the mounting plate back to it. And that's obviously going to go straight into the other side here. Well, maybe it's not. Yeah, no. Take the plug out first. And that goes in. So that loop will stay there all the time. And then obviously you're going to have the other one from back here, back to the control panel. So let's get this one bolted up on the machine. Right, so to attach this to the side of your spindle, which all you got to do is pick up these two holes off here. So simply just bolting this plate to it. Um, they also did include these. I don't know why you'd want to space it off more to offset, but there could be a reason on your machine, but on our machine we're just going to bolt this straight to the side of it. Let's bolt it on, that's very solid. Out of the way of the bottom of my spindle. on easy as that now obviously your wiring comes out the back so you're gonna have to sort of be a little bit careful on making sure that it doesn't get caught up in your wheels here but it should be fine you should be able to come straight up probably come along up the side here maybe even might print some little um, attachments just to make sure that I can pin the wire back to here and I'll run it back across the spindle wire keep it nice and clean so now let's get the wiring done all right so we installed the um so we installed the laser on and then we thought we'd run a homing cycle just to check it would fit. Um, we home our CNC to the left, front left, uh, like our printers just to keep it a lot easier. But we have noticed that if it's mounted up in the normal holes it will collide with this plate here. So that's just something to be aware of if you guys home to the front left. I know some home to the other side, some home to the back. Um, we can flip this over the other way pretty easily if we had to, so home to the other corner, but I just like to keep all my machines home to the other side. So easy fix for this would be basically this plate here, having the holes moved about 12mm, would clear it and it'll tuck it right up in there and it'll keep it clear. You know you can home and you're not going to have any issues. Otherwise you're going to have to remove this and put it on every time and remember to put it back on after you've homed and not before. Right, so sorry for the bit of an awkward angle running out of space here. Um, we ended up removing the plug off it just to make it a lot easier to uh, route it through. So a bit of tape around there just helps protect the wires. And also always remember to take a photo. It makes it a lot easier when you're going back to put it back together. And then we'll confirm to make sure this is what it's meant to be. So you go white, grey, yellow, green and then brown. So literally all now you've got to do is this is going to be plugged in too. And then now all you got to do is literally you sort of plug it back straight back into the back of the module. Uh, we'll probably tidy up all these cables later. That way, I believe. And then we'll probably pin it back to the wall and run some cable management to make it all nice and tidy. So now we've got to tackle the from the power, the, our control box back to here. Okay, so we've got our wires fed up through into our main board here. Um, we depinned it from. They have these little terminal blocks, obviously they set them up depending on which one you've got and they also mark what they all are. We pulled that off because like, you know, no point needing it, we don't really need it. So we've removed it, we've marked what each one is. So it's as simply as making sure we get it set to the right pin on our Arduino, which we've pulled up the diagram here. And hopefully it'll work, so let's hook it up and find out. Okay, now that we've got everything hooked up, um, you can test fire the laser, so you can just simply put your key in, switch it on, power light will come on, press this once, it'll arm the fan and turn the laser on, the fan will kick in, now press and hold for two seconds and it'll test fire the laser, press again it'll turn it off, then for safety reasons you're going to flip this back off again. So that indicates that our laser is working, so now let's try it on the machine. Okay, so we ran a few tests. Uh, we just started pretty conservatively with some numbers that we'd found online. Uh, so we started with this one here, and we've written on the back what they are. So this was at 30% power, 20% power, both at uh, 600 millimeters a second or a minute or 60 millimeters a second. You see it's quite a big difference just in that. Uh, this is a grave a lot deeper but it's quite dark whereas this one's sort of 
it's better but then you sort of lose some of the crispness right around the edges on here so then we did one that was sort of in between as well just to see same speed 40% and that one was at 25% so that one was in between the two that we did first and as you can see it's crisp around the edges and that's probably about what we need for this thing uh, for this wood which is pretty close and then we just did one that was on a black background showing the white uh, this one's probably going to take a little bit more dialing to get in because of the fact that the custom spot on our logo is black normally on this one here that we did so it's quite hard to see uh, we've got some close-up photos here and probably see a little bit better than you can on camera um, we did these at a lot higher speed uh, both at 25 percent one was at a thousand millimeters a minute and one was at 600 millimeters a minute so it shows just what difference the same setting can make just having different speeds so it's a lot of trial and error and then we finally felt a little bit more confident to do something a little bit more uh, bigger in size. So we did this for the wife for Mother's Day. Uh, this took about 13 hours, I believe. This is done on a Fijian cedar. We got these samples from Blyco here in Australia. Um, we're going to hopefully reach out to them, maybe get some more, because these are quite handy to have. So keep an eye out for our next video. Um, we're going to tackle some other materials, such as acrylics. Uh, we're going to probably try and laser graving some anodized um, alloy and whatever else we sort of decide to come up we've got some cork tiles sitting here as well and we also picked up some of these little skateboard which are actually made out of wood um, so we're going to try and grade the bottom of here they are a little bit rounded through here so we're probably going to have to sort of keep somewhat to the middle unless we make up some complex tooling path that sort of accounts for the curve but we're not going to get too carried away so thanks again to um opt lasers for sending us this unit um, it's very exciting to see what we can come up with next with it. So until the next video, have a good one.